The We Think Collective podcast is brought to you in part by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial membership at audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. We Think Collective is also supported by May May Jewelry in Atwater Village. For 15% off your order, enter promo code WTC podcast at maymayjewelry.com. That's M A E M A E jewelry.com. Tim's got that perfect radio voice. Maybe we should ask him to rap our intro. But does Tim even rap? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> hey, Tim, you want to give it a try? Sit back and relax your mind. You're tuned in to a good time. Unwind. Maybe spark one up, cause these chicks are random as fuck. Conversations as real as their asses, so listen up, men. Pull out your glasses, no topics taboo, but they ain't rude. Giving that real shit without the two. Two ladies tackle the challenge of our time, exploring the gravity of the feminine mind. Oh yeah, Tim! <laughs> Get him, Tim. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the We Think Collective Podcast. With your hosts, Heidi Bach and Rena May. Hello, and welcome to We Think Collective Podcast. This is episode 11, and I'm Heidi, here with my co-host. I'm kind of debating whether to change my name when I introduce myself here to Doña Rina May. What do you think? Okay. Should I do it? All right, and Doña Rina May. Thank you. Um, and today we are joined by a very special guest, our friend and renowned barman and entrepreneur, founder, and as he says, convicted sexist. That's not a real thing, guys. He's not a criminal, but we'll let him tell us what that really means. So, <laughs> Dushan, on that note, welcome. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so... I've known Dushan for quite a few years. He's um, a rocker. He's a bartender. Um, he happens to uh, be the founder of some of the best bars in the entire world. Um, but he just says he's a bartender because he's humble like that. So we admire that about you. Um, and we met Dushan, Rena met Dushan a, a, a few, maybe a month ago or so. Yeah. And we started talking about a little bit of like this podcast and um, the dynamics of masculine and feminine and some of the rebalancing that's taking place right now. And uh, the conversation just went into some really interesting directions and we wanted to bring Dushan on to get his perspective on it all. Yeah. When I met Dushan, I, Heidi was like, hey, let's go to this restaurant. And I was like, let's just go to this restaurant. And then Heidi's like, this is Dushan. And I'm like, okay. Then we had this conversation. I'm like, wait a minute. What is he talking about? This is everything I dream of talking about <laughs> with a man in this way with this energy. Like, so thank you for giving me hope, number one, <laughs> that these conversations are awesome and they exist. And this is exactly what our entire podcast is about, is how the balance of the masculine and the feminine energy can communicate to really thrive together. And, and collaborate and keep co-creating in a beautiful way where we keep the essence of who we are, but also deliver who we are on the inside. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm really excited to be here and you're welcome for <laughs> um, letting me um, talk that evening. Um, and it was amazing actually to be able to say things coherently and have somebody really hear it with a different set of ears. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you both. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and we don't have to go any deeper into any of this stuff than you want to, but one of the things that came up was the situation that had taken place, I don't know, was it two years ago, three years ago? I don't know, something online. You can go as deep as you like. Okay, we'll go. I love that about him. Um, guys, Dushan Zarek. <laughs> Is that how you say your last name? Uh, well, you know, I'm Serbian, right? So, um, Properly, it would say Zaric. Zaric. Right? Zaric. Yeah. Zaric. But, uh, Dushan Zaric. But, you know, uh, kind of the Americanized version is Zarek. Okay. It sounds a lot sexier as Zaric. I like it too. Okay. We'll try to say it that way from now on. It doesn't then. matter. You can call me <laughs> Willie if you like. I'm a bartender. <laughs> 
No, I'm groundskeeper Willie. <laughs> She's groundskeeper Willie. That's her. That's, that's one of her alter name. egos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she does pool cleaning on the side. So if anyone needs their pool cleaned, you can reach us, grow it. We think collective will <laughs> put you in touch with Willie, the groundskeeper. No, but um, we we talked and, and we're connected on Facebook, obviously. So I had seen a little bit of this whole thing go down, but I didn't really know the whole story. I didn't follow it. But you, I was like, yeah, what happened? And you were like, I'm a convicted sexist. And I was like, what does that even mean? So what did, what did you mean by that? What was your experience? What happened? Well, it's, um, it's a long story, right? Okay. But um, um, basically to um, kind of try to go by bullet points uh, historically, <laughs> um, it has to do with a lot of the perception of the uh, bartending community in large, especially in the United States, that um, the first employees only that we opened in New York City, the flagship, mm-hmm. um, didn't have uh, women bartenders. Mm-hmm. And um, that was, of course, never the intention. Yeah. Uh, we um, implemented this apprenticeship program into our bar team from day one, 14 mm-hmm. years ago, mm-hmm. in which we tried to um, produce hospitality professionals from ground up. Uh, as we are told and taught by our mentors and our teachers, right, Mm -hmm. in our lineage. Mm -hmm. What does that really mean? That means that you start with us at the bottom kind of of the ladder as kind of a, you know, private in the the military, right? Mm -hmm. And then you progress and get promoted into different levels as you learn what to do and most importantly as you learn what not to do. Um, And um, as it turns out to be uh, that work is physically very demanding and um, people really have to work for a long time until they get to that coveted principal bartender jacket, right? Which is kind of the pinnacle, like you can look at it as kind of a colonel, right? Or or a major in the army, right? Kind of you get to command your own division, right? And to be fair, it would be like in maybe the best army in the world because your bar, you might not say this, but he's at, they've won wards um, all over the world as one of the best cocktail bars in the, in, the, in the entire world. And so if you get a chance to work there, it can be a career-making thing for you if that's the industry you're yeah, wanting the to be idea in. Is, see, the idea is to um, give the people who trust us with their life and their uh, professional uh, career an opportunity not to learn only how to make cocktails. That's just one facet of what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, we develop them into fully grown-up bartenders by also um, teaching them the other skill set, which is obviously human skills, mm. right? Uh, unless you are proficient enough in your um, ability to empathize with your guests and to remember why they're there, you can never really be of service to them effectively. Amen. You know? Oh, God. So, and, the, <laughs> and then the third kind of dimension of our apprenticeship program is obviously um, teaching them how to become their own bosses one day mm-hmm. and lead their own teams, which, you know, if they don't do that, then I sincerely have failed as a teacher. Mm-hmm. Right? So in that kind of atmosphere, in that kind of environment, uh, we had um, certainly women start uh, the apprenticeship program, and um, after a few of them, after a few months, um, would just drop out because once you have employees only in your resume, they would be, you know, um, offered jobs somewhere else where you know they would be full bartending jobs, and where with us they would have to wait for years until we can actually promote them. Mm-hmm. Um, they would just, you know, come to me and say, Deshaun, I'm sorry, but, you know, I have this offer. I, you know, I'm going to make three times the money and, and I, I, you know, I want to stay, but, you know, I, so it turned out to be that our bar team ended up being mostly men, only men and, you know, half immigrants, half Americans and, um, you know, of all colors and races and nationalities, Mm -hmm. no women. Yeah. And, um. And the ladies on Facebook caught wind of that. And the ladies on <laughs> Facebook were always probing and picking on us for that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I try to always keep my distance and elegance and be very respectful of that. And, you know, I have clearly uh, also made some mistakes um, by not noticing that that environment that was man-dominated uh, obviously created some kind of an energy that I 
identify as bro culture, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> where they would, you know, kind of band together. You know, see, the thing is with these, those, those bar teams that I create, they, they just don't leave. Yeah. Uh, we have the lowest staff turnover in the industry. People only leave if they open their own restaurants, right. get married and move, have children, something like that. But they mm-hmm. never leave because they can go somewhere else for a better opportunity. Hence, there's kind of, you know, this kind of bonding is very strong between the team members. They, for example, are, as a result of that, they have a, a fund into which they contribute every day from their tips which is used by the whole team for emergency if somebody get you know gets cut cannot you know cannot work for a while cannot pay their rent wow. uh, if Amazing. there's medical if there's wow. medical bills to be covered like for example one of our bar- uh, bartenders got um, jumped on the street and 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 beaten up and robbed and and I had severe um, injuries on his face a broken uh, cheekbone and jaw and you know that emergency fund paid for all the plastic surgery and all the recovery wow. and his rent and his life expenses. So, you know, really cool stuff, right? Yeah. And so, obviously, I take responsibility for not really reacting or not even noticing at that time that that bro culture can be something potentially extremely dangerous, as it turned for out to women. be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, one of my most prominent apprentices... Uh, moved to Singapore to help my partner Igor open employees only in Singapore Mm -hmm. as a full partner. And, um, you know, in Asia, culture is quite different, right? And and we actually had (laughs) hired women bartenders there, but we couldn't find women servers. Apparently, as I was told, in Asian cultures, it is very frowned upon if women work in the service industry and um, it's not really culturally appropriate so uh, we couldn't like we had men servers but not women and we wanted a balance mm-hmm. right um, it's, it's important if you're creating your front of the house team it's really important that you have that that gender balance so mm-hmm. that that the energy flows properly right so the PR company uh, that they hired in Singapore, and meanwhile, I have an absolutely no affiliation. I'm not a partner in that business. I only participate on the brand side as a co-founder through licensing that, that we grant. Mm-hmm. Post this flyer that says, not only a boys club anymore, looking for some kick-ass female servers. Mm-hmm. And my apprentice naively reposts that on Facebook and launches this avalanche of response in the United States by American Mm -hmm. female bartending community that felt that, you know, what about the women bartenders? Mm -hmm. And, you know, he couldn't even respond that we already have hired women. Actually, one of the principal bartenders there is a woman and super creative and amazing, amazing professional. The, the, The flyer itself was like kind of saying we are a boys club and admitting that in its own way right. without, right. Meanwhile, so poor design choice. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm in Spain. <laughs> when all this is going on, I'm in Spain doing research for a project. I'm in San Sebastian. I'm nine hours ahead. I am in bed. <laughs> I have no idea. And I, you know, had some private experiences, personal emotional experiences with my wife at that time that, you know, we started kind of drifting apart and I started, mm-hmm. you know, actively seeking some, therapy and uh, talking to people to get um, an outside perspective on uh, my situation and I had a session that day and it helped me a great deal to you know um, take different perspectives yeah. and um, I post something because <laughs> in those days I was pretty active um, you know my role in the community was basically just I was just giving mm-hmm. you know I was never asking anything back i i traveled i taught for no for nothing just because i wanted our community to grow and become that um important con- contribution to overall gastronomical movement that's that's taking place right mm-hmm. and um and i post the following i say um if you think that the world has done you wrong therapy is a great way to go about it to you know to heal that wound we are mm-hmm. all hurting somewhere Mm-hmm. I had no idea what was going on. Right. However, that statement, yeah, and I go to bed. Right, right. I'm nine hours ahead. I go to bed. 
and I wake up and my phone is exploding like people are threatening to boycott employees only they're threatening to boycott um, my liquor company that um, I founded I was a co-founder too I mean incredible people are calling me names people who i never met in my life so are, they basically thought you were telling them like if your feelings are hurt by this go get therapy right and you were like not even posting in relation I, to that I, whatsoever I had, not, I, I had no idea but, right so that's what happened welcome to the 2000 <clears throat> whatever so, year we um, are <laughs> the backlash of that was so severe wow. that i was forced by my my liquor company um a dream that i had with my partners to create this um portfolio of spirits that are designed for professionals and kind of in in short are behaving like liquid tools are packaged in a in a tool looking and functioning bottle mm-hmm. um and we were g- getting really good and selling better and more and more and really growing and i was forced to step aside mm-hmm. and abandon my lifelong kind of creative dream that i wanted to do wow um, it was a very painful thing um so um yeah that's why i call myself a convicted sexist uh, <laughs> jokingly <obviously. laughs> wow wow that is quite a long story um and i know there's probably a lot of details that we didn't get to hear but i thank you for sharing it mm-hmm. i think on that note let's take a break and then when we come back let's talk a little bit more about where you've come since then and what you learned from all of that and um, what you what you hope for more people in your industry and beyond to learn from from what you learned. So let's take a break. We'll see you guys in a bit. Tita Meme, what did you want me to do again? Lily, my dream is to have a jingle saying for Meme Jewelry. Can you do it for me, please? Okay. If you're looking for love, then look no more. Meme Jewelry's got a lot in store. Your feelings are welcome, happy or sad. Come as you are. Your heart will be glad. May, 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 may. Come to May, 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 may. The jewelry that loves you back. The jewelry that loves you back. Oh my God, Lily, that was perfect. Visit MayMayJewelry.com to find jewelry that loves you back. Enter code WTC Podcast for 15% off. That's MayMayJewelry.com or click the link in our show notes. Hi, it's Tim Edwards with the Inbound Podcasting Network and producer of the We Think Collective podcast. You know, in just about every episode, Heidi and Rena are either quoting from or discussing one of the latest books they've read or have been inspired by. Perhaps you'd like to read, or better yet, listen to these books for yourself. Well, we want to give you a free audiobook download just for listening to the We Think Collective podcast. Simply click the link in the show notes to audibletrial.com forward slash inbound Sign up for a free 30-day membership trial and download any audiobook you want. If you decide to cancel your membership for any reason at any time, you keep the audiobook. Support the We Think Collective podcast by visiting audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. That's audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. Welcome back, you guys. Sorry, <laughs> I've just been listening to Deshaun's voice for like 30 minutes, and I just feel like I just want to talk a little sexier and a little sultrier for a second. Bring it. Yeah. Hi, Deshaun. Hi, you're making me blush. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys could see us, we'll, we'll take a picture and we'll stamp it to you, but we're here in the studio and Deshaun wears a beanie. I'm wearing a turban. Heidi's wearing a flower girl top, see-through <laughs> top. You know, we're just being us today here in the studio. Just another day. <laughs> um, and yeah, we were talking with our friend Deshaun about his experience um, of being like basically stoned on Facebook. I don't know what else to call it. Um and I think, you know, first of all, I, I really admire your forthcomingness and vulnerability and just being all, willing to share all of this with us. But I also really want to hear more about what's happened for you since that time. Like you talked about you had stuff going on with your wife and your family. And then this whole thing happens with your career. Your dreams kind of get taken away from you. You literally had no choice but to let go of some of the best things you had in your life all in the midst of this time culturally in our society when we have this Me Too movement, there's 
Trump becomes our freaking president. Um, all these other things are happening. And so it's just so, so obvious that there is a tension right now between mm-hmm. the masculine and the feminine energies. Mm-hmm. And in our conversation with you, um, you know, we, you shared a lot about what your experience was. I don't know, Rena, if there was something in particular on that that you wanted to go into, but I'd like to talk about the balance and what you've learned about. You know, you talked about seeing that that was a problem before. Like, what have you learned and how do you want to apply that now in not only your businesses, but in the rest of your life? All right. So um, I think I think it's easy. Like, it's easiest for us to kind of start with, um, you know, I, I, I certainly have um, no education in psychology. I have absolutely I absolutely no education in sociology so that I can you know adequately identify um, what is going on but I can speak from what I've learned and mm-hmm. what has for me brought as a result not only an inner change as a man but has also given me the ability to grant space not only outer space but also inner space without going into the habitual labeling and judgment um few things were apparent to me um first that our western culture has become extremely abusive mm-hmm. emotional relationships uh, mostly fail because as a result of power struggle Eventually, that power struggle, you know, uh, ends up being in, in going into one direction, and then one one of the partners has enough, and it's it's over, right? And that cannot be the furthest, the, you know, that cannot be in my mind um, the farthest thing from what love should be, mm-hmm. what a relationship should be. You know, we 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 have we have a very abusive kind of habitual interaction with each other in which we are taught from very early on in our culture that the only way you can have power is by taking it from somebody else mm-hmm. instead of teaching boys and girls to empower themselves right. to realize that all of us have um, both male and female energies that are very important mm-hmm. uh, to evolve and um, enlighten mm-hmm. uh, from from deep from deep in right yeah. uh, to understand what the empowerment of your female energy brings to you as a man is crucial f- if you want to really have an emotional relationship right. if you want to have a professional relationship with with women you know you right. have to you have to empower that part of yourself yet our culture doesn't know about it doesn't talk about it uh, we deal with with problems, um, you know, just like band-aiding a wound that's oozing and bleeding and is, you know, really deep. And instead of going to the core and healing from deep in and, you know, c- healing the cause, mm-hmm. going to the cause, we're just masking the effect, kind of like, you know, painting over, mm. right? And, um, and it's not producing any long-lasting results, for example. We all agree that Harvey Weinstein is a pig. Yes. Right? In my in my opinion as a man, the most unmanly thing you can do to a woman is misuse your power either professionally or physically to force her into accepting you. Mm-hmm. Actually, the most manly thing is have her come after you. <laughs> now that's sexy. Now that is <laughs> mm-hmm. empowering. Uh-huh. All right? Right. If you have to go and take something without her wanting it, be- just because you can, it is cowardly, it is unmanly, it's very low. Yeah. And as a father of daughters, mm. I certainly, certainly don't, don't want to see a world like that go, right. go on. Right? right? So we had a world like that. I had a world like that where women, you know, were afraid to speak up, were afraid to react to uh, these abuses and challenges mm-hmm. in their life. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad it's 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 shifting. Not I'm only glad that it's shifting. I I try to encourage my daughters to, you know, look look what's going on and uh, ask questions and 
you know, be a part of it. Mm -hmm. On the other side, it's also important that as a man, you keep your male energy healthy and in check Mm because, you know, that can go haywire easy, right? Mm -hmm. It can get um, pathological as well. Right. So learning how to do that requires some kind of an education, some kind of a guidance, some kind of an introspection. And in my experience, um, uh, it requires work on your intuitive intelligence, Mm -hmm. right? Because how do we really communicate as humans? We communicate mostly energetically, non-verbally, right? Right. Uh, Our language is mostly mostly inadequate in really transcribing and translating, you know, the the finesse of our emotions, the finesse of our perceptions, and, and, and especially the movement of our souls and our energies, right? And nobody talks about this. Nobody even cares. So if you want to grow that way, you got to go and seek alternative, you know, teachings, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so, which are, you know, kind of not... Woo-woo. Woo, you know? Yep. Like spirituality. I call yes. it woo-woo. Woo, spirituality, right? <laughs> she so, wears a turban, so she's super woo-woo. <laughs> all right. Well, anyways, so... Then you know what the way our culture, because of these these kind of presets that that we have uh, of dealing with things in the extreme, what we are witnessing right now, in my opinion, is a little bit not healthy. Mm. I'm not saying. Let me say this right away. I'm not saying that there is no <laughs> real victims. Of course, there's real victims, and of course, that's validated, and it's absolutely. Uh, necessary that we deal and help these people Mm -hmm. deal with them deal with their perpetrators and 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 help and provide support structures so that being said i think that we can't you can't teach a man like harvey weinstein you can't teach a 50 year old man really that he's wrong he's going to take that personally he's going to take that emotionally his whole life he's been taught that this is the way how to go about himself Mm -hmm. Right? What we should be doing is focusing on our boys and girls. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, we are now witnessing the pendulum swinging in the other extreme from, you know, extreme patriarchy into this extreme, like, feminine power, which is great, but is not balanced. Mm -hmm. Right? It's unbalanced at the moment. At the moment. Right, so we have all these reactions. There, this 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 reactionary thing, right? So, for example, this morning I'm reading a liberal news outlet, and you know they have conducted um, uh, research in, in the tech field, um, whatever manufacturing in America, professionals, and asking them how they're dealing with the new Me Too movement, mm-hmm. both men and women. And you know, mm-hmm. while women are extremely happy that there is this new awareness Mm -hmm. (laughs) men are you know the comments by men are like not all but a great majority is like for example i don't even look in the directions of women i can never be in a room alone with a woman unless there is a third person present and a fourth one preferred i never approach a woman unless i'm approaching her from up front so they're walking on eggshells yeah so Mm -hmm. you know so um obviously that uh that's also unhealthy, right? Because mm-hmm. that's certainly not what women are asking for. In, in my in my understanding, right? Yeah. What women are asking for is to be respected for who they are, exactly. given exactly the same uh, choices that are that men take for granted. Mm-hmm. You know, to you know, to, to the, the freedom to find themselves and be an active participant in our society. Right. That's what I understand this movement's about. Right. It's not about punishment necessarily. It's not about making men afraid. You know, and men are afraid because they don't know women. Yeah. Well, I think there's a a breaking down of the old system that's happening right now and and it definitely feels extreme at the moment. Um mm-hmm. because the the patriarchy is so pervasive. It's everywhere. And so the the ways in which women have been being abused and, and treated uh, inside of especially the workforce 
it goes so deep. It's a big part of why we started this podcast and, and why we started We Think Collective, because we were realizing that part of the challenge here is that the whole structure of bi- the business world right now was built by men for men, and there's no place for us as ourselves in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so until we kind of see that old system broken down, I don't know, you know, how I don't think that that particular system is going to be able to carry over into the new. I believe we have to create some new ones. But what I hear you saying that that is super important is, okay, yes, somebody's got to worry about the Harvey Weinsteins of the world and taking them down, right? Mm-hmm. And breaking this old system. But simultaneously, we also need to be thinking about the new system that we're building. And we should be looking at our children. And we should be looking at specifically not just the girls who are getting a lot of messaging right now mm-hmm. about girl power and, you know, you can do it and da, 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 but also at our boys and how, what efforts are we making as a collective community and society to educate them mm-hmm. about emotional intelligence, to educate them about, you know, how to keep their masculine in a healthy place and how to really express that in a way that brings their true gifts forth. Um and I think that's, that's super important. That's a huge point. Yeah, it's not just the emotional intelligence, right? Um, we all have different levels of emotional abilities and uh, emotional intelligences, as far as I understand. Mm. Um, and that is something we can uh, evolve mm-hmm. and we can grow. What is really important is, I think, that both men and women, and women have somehow, I think, by nature or genetically or historically, so sociologically, I don't know how, but in, it seems to me that women have a much higher development in their intuitive intelligence. Mm-hmm. Uh, and men generally don't. Mm-hmm. And I have found that when I have allowed myself to grow that part of myself, my world has become much richer. My world has become much more attuned um, to everybody who walks in right. uh, into my life. And um, it has brought a lot of benefits to keep myself in balance mm-hmm. and grounded and yeah. you know, on point going where I think at the moment I should be. Yeah. So how would you say <clears throat> for you right now, how would you say someone even start or begin? Like let's say there's some dude listening to this podcast right now. Hi, guy. Um, Hi, buddy. And he's all like, wow, I really appreciate what Deshaun is saying. And I do want to get in touch with my intuition. Mm -hmm. Like, where would you point them to even start that journey? Um, I think the best way to start is to look around your your circle of of people who who are your friends and acquaintances and family. And is there a man in that circle that inspires you as a man? Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Is, is there is yeah. there is there somebody that you would like to be like? Right? Mm-hmm. Somebody who's balanced, somebody who's respectful, somebody who is still a man. He's a man, still a man, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, trust me, I can speak about all these things. I'm still a man, right? Mm-hmm. And I can take that power and use it whenever I need to, but it's not going to dominate me. Yeah. You know? So, um, We have to start looking, learning, where is my deficiency in my inner development? You see, if we only take our earthly self as the only reality that we possess, such as my body and my mind, then, you know, we kind of are missing a great deal of life and experience that could be available for us, a great deal of understanding, especially, you know... um, when problems occur, and they are occurring into everybody's life, mm-hmm. when stressful situations occur, and they happen to everyone, right. right? So how do we make sense of those? We are, you know, we are beings that have this high cognitive development in our culture. We want to analyze. We want to know. We want to give ourselves answers. Well, you can't necessarily know unless you really understand the cause of things, mm-hmm. right? And so you've got to find a teacher. And when I say look for a man that inspires you as a man, it doesn't necessarily have to be a man. It could be a woman in wh- whose presence you just feel that this being is accepting you just as you are. And that's a pretty good sign. Mm-hmm. When, you know, because most people always want something from you energetically, you know, you know, 
it's 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 a really weird situation, right? Where people are always kind of having that power struggle, right? So you know, girlfriends want boyfriends to change and be more ambitious. The boyfriends want the girlfriends not to gain weight and stay perfect and kind and affectionate, just like the first night when they had them over. You know, like all that is an illusion. Change is inevitable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The definition of conservatism is resistance to change. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So you want to be a liberal and ca call yourself a progressive, yet you are living in this worldview where you, know, you don't allow your partner to change and grow, then you're a conservative. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Ooh, he called you conservative. <clears throat> right? That's like the biggest insult in California. Right? <laughs> right? Maybe so, not all of no, California. But, you, know, it, you know, the whole thing, that you start with being brutally honest with yourself. Mm. If you're not brutally honest with you, if you're not honor yourself, there's no chance you can honor really anybody else. Yeah. If you're not honest with yourself, the moment you accept yourself as you are, and I don't mean accept yourself only the good parts of yourself. Now, that's also another trick that our culture tries through the religions to, you know, impose on us, you know, thou shall not, you know, all these top 10 hits, right, of what you should, should not do, <laughs> right? All, all that stuff makes you believe that you should only accept yourself when you finally reach that ideal of being all good, right. a good boy, a good girl. And in the meantime... You're in the meantime, kinda... you're dragging your dark side with you, which is not integrated. And all of us have a shadow. And all of us have a, you know, a really important shadow. It has a lot to teach, teach us, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so this is where I think people should look at. That's what people should look at. And, and, and see, is there a deficiency? What do I perceive? What are the common challenges? And is there a correlation? Mm. Right? Um, good thing to do is maybe invest in some literature, some, some reading, see what works, you know? Maybe therapy. We talked about that on our last episode. Yeah. You know, it's good to have a guy. Therapy is great some in these like days. Coaches these or times is great. A spiritual teacher. Yeah. Um, but I like that idea of looking in your circle too and seeing, you know, who there who you have already that you admire and just seeking them out and asking asking questions, asking for advice, asking for feedback. Sometimes even just asking, Hey, is there anything you've ever noticed that I do that that mm -hmm. I could improve upon, you know, and mm -hmm. just being humble and opening yourself up to that. Yeah, there's this idea that all of us carry this chief psychological feature. And you can visualize that that chief feature that we have is kind of positioned below your chin mm -hmm. in front of your throat. And everybody that encounters you sees it, but you can't. Mm. Yeah. So you have to find in your life somebody that you trust, that when they tell you these things, you don't take it in a negative way, you don't take it defensively, you actually say, uh-huh, maybe there's something there. And then it might be, you know, a great help for you to make these connections. Yeah. And nurture them. Aw, I'm grateful for my partner, Rena, my co-host, and for our friend, Dushan, for coming in today on the podcast. I think on that note, we should, we should wrap it up. Yeah. It feels like a good place to end. Um, so thank you all for listening today and joining us. Thank you to our guest, Deshaun, for thank you. sharing thank his you. heart with us and his experiences. And uh, we'd love to hear your comments, um, your feedback, any things that you recommend yeah. uh, for either women or men who are looking to get more in uh, touch. P.S. If you live in an area where there's an employees only and you like cocktails yes ye so much yes you yes. guys we'll put the link in our show notes it's a great experience if you want to impress someone they make you feel safe and accepted and so. they see the part between your throat let's call it <laughs> throat beneath your chin yeah <laughs> so let's call it throat and they accept it anyway it's Love. a beautiful thing thank you guys we'll talk to you next time bye, bye.